Hey, it's Force Closed here. Today I'm going to show you a video on Dungeon 8 Skull 11 with free to play only heroes. I'm only going to use shardable heroes. That means no spirit mage, no gem roll heroes, only the basics. All right, so let's get started. Here's my strategy. It took me a while to figure it out, but here's the best that I can come up with. I got to purchase magic first. So I head on the left side because that's where Spirit Mage is. And first I drop Druid from a distance to draw aggro of that first arrow tower. And then I drop Paladin and Thunder God right there on that magic tower. And the reason I do this is I want Druid to take down that arrow tower just after Thunder God and Paladin break through that wall segment. This creates a small gap and it makes Druid want to walk through it. So once that magic tower do goes down, Druid thinks that the best path to the second magic tower is through that wall segment. And from here, your hero should be able to uh, negate most of the damage by spreading out. And this allows Thunder God to go and proc. It's a very slow process, but it gets the job done. The main drop is the most important, and from every test that I've done so far, once you can get past that first little wall segment, the rest of it's pretty easy going. You just want to take it real slow to give Thunder God the most procs possible. Now as you can see, none of my heroes got very low on health. I think that you could probably do this with a six star druid. Um, I do have Berserk on mine and my Paladin has stone skin, so that helps a bit overall. However, I think that it might be possible with a bit lower. And here they're getting a little bit close to the heroes. Thunder God hasn't really had the best procs. He's been mostly on the buildings. And finally, he just now took out Ninja. This run isn't the best, but what I was mostly worried about is getting over 50%. I just want a victory with the least damage possible. So if I could do something consistent, no hero losses, no troop losses, and still get a victory with only shard heroes, then I'm happy. And this is the closest that I could get to it. Now that all the buildings are taken care of, most of the troop camps are destroyed, I can drop my, my last two cleanup heroes. And luckily I have Revive on Thunder God, so he actually didn't die from Champion's proc, but that's as far as I could really get safely. It's a victory, so it's worth it. And I'll take you through another time. Just because there is slight variation, it really matters where you drop your heroes. Just the slightest difference could change it. So if you notice where Druid drops, it makes him walk upwards. I want him the highest possible onto that arrow tower so he doesn't walk to the south magic tower. If he if he draws aggro on the south magic tower second, or if he attacks the south magic tower, then he could walk towards the army camp. I think he does that on the third run. You might see it next time. But from here, they made the small gap for Druid to walk through. They're slowly picking off the walls. Thunder God already killed the Spirit Mage, which is great. And we're just taking it slow from here. There's not really much to worry about. I don't have to use magic until they get closer to the heroes or troop camps. I don't have to deploy any more heroes until the time gets lower. This strategy is fairly safe, as long as you get the drops perfectly. Now my other strategy with Pumpkin Duke, which you can see in my other videos, I drop it from the top, but that's because Pumpkin Duke significantly boosts the attack speed and Druid can handle healing all the rest of them in time. But for this one, it spreads out the damage 
and it delays. It, it's a very slow process. So I don't need to have the extra heals. And what I like here is where Druid is in the middle and the other heroes on the, are on the edge. If Druid is in the middle since he's a ranged hero and the others are melee heroes, he can take out this town hall without the other enemy heroes attacking him. And Thunder God can sit safely over on the corner and kills the succubus just like that. And here I can drop the rest of my heroes and might as well drop some troops as well to clean up. Since I'm running pretty low on time, uh, I usually don't expect to get 100% with shard only heroes. But if you get the right procs and if you get the right line, then you can get this far without any losses. And I dropped the Guardian Angel because usually those that troop camp on the bottom left takes whoever out very rapidly. That's the main one to watch out for. And I didn't even need to use Restoration. Got it in just the last second. Had no time to spare. But it's 100%. So it is possible. I do advise using troops because sometimes it can get kind of hectic at the end. Troops can save you if you end at 48% with a really bad run. Those troops can take out one more tower for the extra 2-3%. to 3%. So here's one more time. I think this one Druid does a bad, a bad walk. And if you notice, Thunder God and Paladin are attacking two different wall segments. This is okay if they can break through the wall segment before Druid can destroy that magic tower at the top. And it didn't, so this could end badly. What is preferred if you can get Paladin and Thunder God to attack the same wall segment. However, since they're so far away, only a few of the towers are attacking them. That's this strategy so great, is instead of having all the towers attacking at once, only half of them can attack. And by the time you get through to the other half, the first half is destroyed. Well, luckily Druid was in the range of Thunder God, so he gets to stay safe. He gets his heals. And what I'd be worried about right now is Paladin walking south and drawing Aggro of the Spirit Mage. Looks like he's tucked into the very corner and he still doesn't have the Spirit Mage attacking him. So that's a good sign. But once he busts through that wall segment, it could be a whole nother story. And Thunder God might be out of the range of Druid right now. So I might have to use Restoration. I end up dropping heroes to try to finish off the towers faster. Unfortunately, they decide to walk around the walls and this could be hazardous once I get down to that army camp at the bottom right. Spirit Mage is attacking, but Thunder God came and saved the day. Meanwhile, I have to save his life. Well, it looks like I'll be able to get at least 50%. It wasn't the best run, but it was doable. And here, I prefer Atlanticore. If you saw, I had to cancel out fast because Paladin was going to die. Atlanticore can pretty much take out that entire army camp by himself. All right, here's my last attempt. I'm pretty sure this one went poorly. All right, now they're attacking two different wall segments. It still might be okay. What's also important is to drop Paladin and Thunder God before Druid reaches the, ar the arrow tower because I think that the arrow tower in the middle might attack the Druid. And if you get two arrow towers on the Druid, he could die. And see, he walked south. I think that magic tower was destroyed before Druid could get over to it. 
and that's not a very good run. Still might be doable, but this does happen if you don't place the heroes just right. And Thunder God's proc does play a part, but you can't hope for the best every time. Finally, he's attacking some of the heroes, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. Got to drop a Guardian Angel because Spirit Mage has got, a ma has got such high damage. Alright, that's why I love Champion. Champion got the stun out there. Spirit Mage proc'd, but that's why I spam troops. Because Spirit Mage, for some reason, in one of the most recent updates, he likes to proc on troops more than anything else. Even when, when you're attacking with Spirit Mage, he'd rather destroy enemy troops than enemy buildings or heroes. And this is why I like to have a lot of griffins. See, I spammed them, and they were able to take out the town hall, which gave me just enough with some significant losses, but just enough to get the victory and get the shards. Now here's the heroes that I use. My druid is a seven star with five of nine. So he heals pretty good, 6,600, but I'm pretty sure it could work with, I don't know, 5,500. I also have berserk. So that speeds up the heals a little bit, but it's probably not necessary with this strategy. My Thunder God, he has five of nine, seven star. Uh, revive is, doesn't really do much unless he dies. Uh, that usually shouldn't be the case though. My champion, nothing really noteworthy here. He has revive, so he can be a decoy target really. My Paladin has good health. Stone skin, like I said, reduces 10%, so he can tank a little bit more than usual. But again, nothing really significant here. And for the fifth hero, it doesn't matter. I've got a succubus, not really worth anything. It's just someone to clear a little bit more damage. Grim Reaper would be better, and Atlantic would probably be better than Paladin. I hope you enjoyed my video and you're able to farm Dungeon 8 Skull 11 for 37 shards now. Thanks for watching.